and we are live. Yeah, I'd like to call the Finance Committee meeting to get it to order for November 22, 2022. Uh, it's now five minutes after three o'clock and welcome everybody. Um, this uh, meeting um, is being held via Zoom pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 is extended. This meeting is being conducted by a remote means. Members of the public who wish to um, access the meeting may do so by a Zoom or by telephone. Um, no one, uh, there's no in-person attendance of members of the public and uh, but every effort is being made to assure that the public can adequately access these proceedings in real time by technological means. Uh, also um, want to remind everybody that this meeting is being recorded. So that should uh, be reflected. So I'm gonna go through the members of the committee and make sure that members of the committee who are present the constitute quorum can um, hear me and be heard. Uh, Kathy? Yes, here. Uh, Lynn? Present. Michelle? Present. Bob? Here. <clears throat> Matt? Present. Okay, so there are um, presently four members of the for council members and two resident members present and that constitutes a quorum. So we can keep going and we will confirm other people um, as if they can participate as they join uh, the meeting. Um, since we know that Bernie's trying to get in and we're expecting Michelle um, in a little bit of time. The agenda for today's meeting after call to order is to review the agenda and uh, so we were going to um, spend a couple of minutes reviewing the forum of last night. I did take some notes. I'm going to wait for Bernie to get back because Bernie's the one member of the committee who was not there last night. So he may need the review more than anybody else. We will have public comment later in the meeting. Um, the principal topic is the FY24 budget guidelines. Um, we have uh, uh, may want to discuss whether we need an additional meeting to deal with the guidelines and other issues coming forward. Uh, approval of minutes. I have one set of minutes to submit to you for approval. And uh, then under items not anticipated uh, by the chair 48 hours in advance, uh, we might want to take a couple minutes um, Bernie, hi, can you hear? Bernie, try again, as we didn't hear you. You're muted at the moment. Here we go. I'm now I'm completely faded, so it's yes. consistent. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm present. You're present in the cloud, but you're present. Yes. Um, some people may have noticed I've, I've been in a fog lately, so it's now literal. So. OK. Um, we have uh, we were just reviewing the agenda and called the meeting to order, and we're reviewing the agenda is all that I've done so far. And I was saying that there might be that we might take a couple of minutes to talk about one additional item. Uh, all counselors have received a memorandum from the superintendent of schools, the athletic director, and uh, the uh, I sent copies to the resident members uh, prior to the meeting so that all members would have a copy of that uh, very brief uh, memo that he sent. And it follows last night's meeting and the vote that took place in last night's meeting. Um, one of our members, uh, Michelle, has uh, suggested that we need to uh, just talk about um, whether we should be getting that onto the a future agenda for the committee. And uh, so I uh, want to recognize her request by. Um, adding that as an unanticipated agenda item. 
So I don't know if anybody else has anything unanticipated. I um, said that I had taken notes last night. So <clears throat> the first item was the, uh, if there's any comments about the public forum section of last night's um, meeting and um, just for Bernie's sake, he was the one person who was not present. Um, I think we had 19 people who spoke to the committee. Um, six of them were teachers of paralegals who spoke about um, the salary negotiations and the need for funds to assist in dealing with uh, the, the dilemma that they're in. Um, and the comments were fairly consistent with uh, what we heard at the night of the financial indicators meeting. We had three people who were talking about climate action and were requesting an additional staff position, suggesting that given the uh, extent of the, of the climate action plan, that uh, just um, having Stephanie as the uh, Ticarello as the only staff person who was not sufficient staffing. So that was um, what three comments were about. There were seven people who were commenting in sub form with a, uh, some differences in emphasis, but talking about Crest, desire to get it for to 24-hour um, coverage, uh, the um, question about the BIPOC Cultural Center uh, and uh, Victim Compensation Fund, cutting uh, the police department, that combination fit into um, seven of the comments that we received. We had, and by the way, um, some people covered more topics and bridged into other things saying, Oh, and we also support the teachers or things like that. So it wasn't exactly clean. Uh, we had a couple of people who um, raised other issues. Uh, one was um, that we need more staff at Town Hall to assist getting things done, including the strategic partnership agreement. So um, that kind of was the summary of what, what we heard. I don't know if there's anybody from the committee who has any comments about the forum part of last night's meeting and what how we what we might want to take from that as we go forward and talk about the guidelines. Okay, seeing no requests then. Um, I sent you um, yesterday a uh, piece that I did, which what, what, what I did was I went through the guidelines for uh, the current year FY23, and I tried to go through and identify issues that sort of popped out at me as I was thinking about, gee, if I was going to take the guidelines and modify the general format and but make them applicable for this year, what are the kinds of things we need to talk about? And that was the list that I have sent to um, everybody who's present because it went to the entire finance committee group, which includes our staff. Um, so I wanted to at least start the discussion by um, finding out whether there were additional issues that people would like to add or whether they think that they would amend or delete anything from the list because my my list was to start a discussion and not to be the discussion so let me pause and uh michelle saw your hand pop first thanks andy um the only one that and i'm sorry there's a little noise in the background the only one that i didn't that i didn't see on here that stood out to me was the the reparations commitment um, which I know we have some criteria on regarding the health of, of our, you know, financial situation year to year, but I would like for it to be in the guidelines. Um, and I'm not sure if this was a list of everything that would be in the guidelines, or if you were just sort of pulling out, um, highlights. So I just wanted to make sure that makes its way into the guidelines. 
Okay, good, got it. Um, <clears throat> if it was in last year's guidelines and I missed, I could have missed it because it was issues to talk about, but I think it's important there. Thank you, Bob. Yeah, um, I just, a couple of things, I'm not sure that they couldn't be woven into some of the other discussions, but um, the first thing is, I think we're getting to the point now where we're going to have to start, the council is going to have to start making some real difficult choices. I don't see how with 8% inflation and 8% you know, health insurance uh, inflation every year, I don't see how 2.5% is going to get us to where we want to be. Um, and maybe we can get other sources of revenue, but I'm very concerned. And I know Kathy raised this issue a couple of years ago. Uh, we're getting to that point in the FY24, 25, where we're going to really start seeing stress on the budgets. And I think that it would be important for us to identify that. The second thing I wanted to say um, is based on what I heard last night, I think maybe we've done a disservice to the town in terms of where we've kind of talked about how strong our financial position is and how great we've been in managing things. And don't get me wrong, we have been very good in managing things, but I think we're almost giving uh, the residents a sense, a false sense of security in that, you know, we got all these stabilization funds, we got all this, and we it, we can really do other things. We just have to do it. And the reality is, most of these funds are there for a specific purpose and not really fungible into other things. So again, I'm not sure we want to pull this out as a separate thing, but I do worry that we're not communicating to the town how tight the budgets really are going forward. Thanks. Yeah, that's a good point. And I do think that where you're, um, some of those comments, none of them going to go on, uh, is uh, when I talked about under numbers, uh, I think it's four and five, revenue and expenditure plans should be viewed in a multi-year context in particular uh, in the effect of one-time funding and how we're dealing with that. But I think that this whole, you're, you're at, what you're suggesting is a larger aerial view of the budget to include in what our report, our, what the guidelines are and that they fit together. Um, Bernie? Thanks, Andy. Um, the list that you generated was, was very comprehensive, and I just would note that the reparations commitment was in the letter that we sent last year, but not a separate, um, I'm forgetting which section it was in, but there, we certainly have, the committee certainly hasn't forgotten about the reparations. Um, I just want to echo some concerns. Um, I think, you know, Bob's statements are, are, are well taken. Um, and we always start with some kind of disclaimer that this is going to be a horrible year. And then we go on and tell everybody how much more we're going to do. Um, I think at this point, we need to say this far and no further um, <clears throat> that we're going to forego any new efforts, anything that hasn't been currently, we haven't currently actually started um, until we can um, get some clarity on the major building projects, our revenue stream. Um, I get concerned, you know, I, I understand the, the desire for a cultural center, but um, the budget that was proposed for one is fiction. And, um, um, you know, the, uh, the here again, it's another program expansion. Um, we have four new firefighters we have to support. We have the CREST program, and we need to look carefully at what the staffing needs of that program really is um, and how much it's, it's returning in terms of its value. That's going to take another year to do that. Uh, so my concern is, is that we, you know, we just simply draw a line. We say we're, we're, 
we're, we're, we're going to just take care of what's on our plate right now. And we will have other surprises coming up, I'm sure. Um, that uh, uh, so, so nothing new for the next 12, next fiscal year. The other thing I'd wonder about is if we need to have some kind of equity statement in the guidelines or some kind of statement that points out that when salaries are considered, salaries are considered based on the job description and the department the person works in um, and what the prevailing uh, wages are for that particular position. Uh, I get this, I, 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 it's not just this town, it's every town I've been in, people will come in and say, well, the cops make so much, how come the teachers can't make this or uh, how come, uh, you know, the teachers make this much? How come the uh, how guys can't make this much? And so on and so on. Um, we we have, you know, we we go through, uh, the town goes through great pains to kind of scale the positions and look at what's going on um, in, in terms of, of competing interests uh, for that particular uh, position. And I I'm just would like to tamp down uh, this, tendency to pit one group of employees against another in terms of what they make. Um, and so that's, those are my, those are my concerns, but otherwise, Andy, I think the, you, you know, your discussion topics was, were right on point. Last one, you it's interesting. Kathy? Um, I completely agree with what both Bob and Bernie just said. Um, and I think, um, you know, in looking at the list, the list is fine, but I think this is a document that sends, is a communication document. It's not just, it's guidelines, but it's, it's like, where are we and where are we going? So I think these kinds of things should come really early, you know, on whatever the logical order is of the rest of it, because uh, we, and including what Bernie just referenced is, um, we're under market pressure across the board um, on wages and salaries. Um, you know, it's and and we we are likely needing to take a look at where we stand relative to. Last night, I was kind of shocked because it was all the East Coast towns, but to the surrounding marketplace. I mean, that, that, you know, if you're you're living in Greenfield, you don't compare yourself to Wellesley usually. Um, but just something that states it, because even with step increases, two and a half percent is tough. Um, if, if you know, if if they're benefited jobs, so that kind of uh, difficult choices that this isn't mean spirited. Um, then the other thing on Cress. Um, so Paul, I don't know how and when you'll be able to do this, but I think of Crest is getting up and running. I've always thought personally, we would be figuring out how to do peak load staffing. And we won't know what that is until we know what kinds of calls they can handle. And is that on weekends? Is that during the week? Is it ever happened in morning? I actually never envisioned 24 seven unless it turns out that's needed, but some sense of a timeline that after six months, after nine months, after 12 months, we'll have, you know, and I'd just like to put a couple words in here is when we'll have a better sense of how it interacts with the workload of the police, you know, and, and the staffing level that we're paying for. So Bernie's like, let's assess what we've got. So it, it's somewhere in this, um, kind of mix. So that's just a, those pieces. And then the other thing we did here, um, you know, since other than the schools, everybody and the library poll, everybody works for you. We heard one strong request that there should be a two person uh, sustainability department um, from the public. And I think we just need an assessment. I know at one point you used some grant funds to fund three years worth of a housing person to help with all the housing projects we had, uh, you know, because they were all coming in at once and it stretched the step, the existing staff. So um, the what I the encouraging. Andy, you don't quite have it in a bullet. Encouraging what I think our town manager has always done 
creative approaches <laughs> to um, to filling gaps where we have staff gaps, you know, where we have a series of things we know we want to do over the next 12 months. And but and I, I have no way of judging anybody's workloads. I mean, I don't want people leaving because the only way they can get their job done is evening and, and weekend hours in addition to full-time jobs. So just something about, the, I see it as a box, two and a half percent. And uh, today's paper talked about what that translates and in terms of housing. And of course, they right away showed Northampton's, um, you know, on a, what's happening to our tax base, that we don't have a big tax base to spread everything. So just, it's it's a tone of the document, Andy, that I'm looking at. You know, on an introduction statement and an end, rather than each of the these pieces. Um, so so that's it. Um, we had a whole section last time on pilot and um, either getting it in strategic partnership or going for legislation at the state level to get us some revenue resources from some some of the wealthy institutions that are here. So I want to want to keep that part of the document and I'll stop. It's, you know, I just feel like we're, we're never going to grow ourselves out of the box we're in, in a year's time, um, period. No, it's a tone and messaging. That's it. Well, uh -huh. Thank you. Um, sorry about the delay. So um, first, I, I, I was thinking the same thing uh, during our presentation that you were, Bob, in terms of like what we've always said about the strength of the town and that that, um, but we didn't put in this sort of enough of the caveats that we feel that we all recognize, but we didn't do that very publicly. I think that's something we can improve on. Um, because that article was wrong, um, they're, put, they're going to put a correction in the increase. Uh, it's it's under four hundred dollars. It's not eight hundred dollars. So um, it's already been corrected too, Paul. It's in the because that online article has been corrected. It's in it's in the print edition, but they're they're going to put a correction in the print edition tomorrow as well, and not just in the correction. It's going to go do a small article. Um, in terms of you know, we looked at the CSWG report as a as a sort of a, a starting point and a sort of a, a roadmap, but not as a bible. And so we don't. I, I don't look at that as something we have to abide everything they recommend. In fact, I'm really relying on in terms of, of the Crest program. You know, the just what you said, the experience. What are they going to look like? What are other communities doing in in other, you know, in, in other um, states? I mean. Earl reports that no department in any state goes past 10 p.m. Um, so, you know, the idea of 24-7, I mean, if he comes back and says, I really want 24-7, we would give that serious consideration. Um, and then, you know, what we heard last night are, are some, you know, three different groups of people. We have not, you know, we we have not begun meeting with our department heads, and they have a sort of boatload of uh, requests and needs as well. Um, and you've got the... Um, if we're going to go, you know, you saw the uh, letter from the superintendent, like if we are going to be maintaining grass, we have to invest in grass and that that's going to be a significant investment. So all those things will be come into play as we start to build, build the budget. So that's what I want to mention. Okay. Um, Lynn, just going to keep going around. When Alicia gets in, by the way, um, I think we're going to have to do a little bit of catching her up because we've been talking about issues that we know she cares deeply about. But I believe, uh, I believe that Michelle had her hand up before I did. Michelle, do you want to go first? Sure. I, I really just wanted to build on what Paul was saying, and actually, Andy, what you just said, given Alicia's not here and um, the CSWG report. Um, something I had in mind after we um, created a pretty hefty agenda, I think, for the DEI department at our meeting, not last night, but the previous meeting, um, there were a lot of items that we voted in that motion that seemed to require the expertise and the capacity and time and resources of the DEI department. 
Um, and so I, this is more a question to Paul or just a curiosity to put out there in terms of um, whether, especially given that both Pamela and Jennifer play a significant role as liaisons to those committees, and that takes a lot of time. I'm just wondering if we feel that the DEI department has the financial and resources otherwise um, to manage all of those items that I think have a four month window on them, um, at least for some reporting back. But just generally speaking, um, if that department feels it's a department of two um, and it seems like we're asking a lot of them. So I was just I'm curious what your thoughts were on that. So Thank you. Um, so I was just at the mass managers conference on Thursday and Friday. We have the largest DEI department in the state for towns um, that were at that conference. Everybody else has one person. Um, so uh, we have not gone through that the, the tick list. Uh, and I, but I was comfortable with that list because it's stuff that we're already doing um, is, is already on our work plan. So I'm not too concerned about meeting that list. Um, and so and I and in terms of and I'm, you know, uh, I think we can report back to the council successfully on things that we're able to accomplish and what we're not able to accomplish. So I think, you know, these departments are operating they you know, um, technically under under, I mean, legally under under the town manager's instruction direction and um, they have a mission to to complete certain things and you know, it's not just to manage committees, that's a piece of their job, but it's the committees, the committees are their own functions, they can conduct, they don't need staff there to do their work. Um, so, and um, so it's important for us to recognize what the role of committees are and what the role of our staff are, there's a difference between the two. Andy, can I add to that real quick? Sure. Um, and so this will be Pamela's first budget cycle, I've met with her to walk her through the process, as Paul said, department heads, um, play a, a very large role in developing the budget. So um, I'm sure Pamela, I know for a fact, Pamela is identifying sort of, you know, what she has currently for resources, what she thinks she will need for next year to accomplish um, the different goals that she's heard and what, and what comes out in the, um, from the town manager and the town council. Um, and she'll have an opportunity to submit those for Paul's consideration. And um, so, so I would say there's different angles that come at it, but Pamela, I know, is thinking about it as well. Yeah, and she and I met on that today, in fact, so. She's thinking hard about that. Thanks, Andy. Um, I, I appreciate the cautions that people have put up and they're real. They're really real. <laughs> um, and the many other points that people have made. The one thing, one of the things that I want to stress is that it's very easy to sit and advocate for a department that you work with, but what about the departments none of us are working with? The, and the staffing needs in those departments. So it's, you know, we hear about sustainability, and heaven knows I support the sustainability issue, but they have a committee, they're advocating for that committee. So as we look at staffing, it's staffing across the board. And my sense is, and this really goes back to what have we already committed to and therefore what do we need to financially support? And that is where we need to put our money is what we've committed to and we can financially support. We've done some amazing things in Amherst that no other town in Massachusetts our size is doing. And we need to make sure they're successful. So that does bring me to one question to Paul, and that is in addition to the rolling out of Crest and all the other things that go with it, have we in fact set up an evaluation of Crest so that we have not just statistical feedback, but you know, evidential, evidentiary feedback? I can't, I'm sorry, I can't say it. Um, and really a way of looking at um, the comparison of what Cress is doing and the way other uh, operations like this are working in other cities and towns across the country that have them. Um, I also um, 
I would do want to make sure that the pilot at the state level and strategic partnerships continues to be highlighted in here. This is something that Mindy Dom and Joe Comerford have committed to working on with us. And uh, we need to get back to those discussions with them because with UMass, it would be increasing pilots at the state level with the strategic partnerships. Those would be for the private institutions. So, um, and I, Paul, I have to just say thank you for being clear that recommendations do not become Bibles. They are, in fact, recommendations. We have more recommendations before us right now than we could ever fund in a million years. And we need to think strategically about what do we have to do and what is the role of town government? Uh, I'm glad you said, brought that up because when I was um, putting together the list, I was thinking first of all about um, number two as it's on the list, which is a majority of the community values, current um, services, uh, get an extra word in there, but that, that um, observation about current services and the whole range of uh, current services. And then uh, towards the end, uh, new expenditures should be consistent with council goals and goals for the town manager. Uh, I sort of have been thinking about those two together because uh, the management goal, uh, one of the management goals always is keep the town running well, essentially, and which is what it goes along with taxpayers valuing what the town provides. And uh, so in some ways, those two pieces are an important core. Matt? I just wanted to, I meant to make a note on uh, number two there, Andy. I, I would say that talking to folks around town and traveling around town, um, current services, you know, level services, um, in my opinion, roads and sidewalks, we, we do need to invest more in roads and sidewalks. And I really don't talk to many people who are happy with the current level of, of services there. No, and that's no reflection on the staff, but uh, I, 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 would, I would suggest that that's an area of displeasure among most, most residents of the town. So I uh, guess I wasn't thinking of capital when I was doing that, but that's a valid point because uh, I think that there are a lot in roads and sidewalks has probably been the leader all uh, continuously because it's what people used every day. And given New England weather, it continues to decay as you try and fix it. So it's uh, a never ending goal. Paul? Oh, I just want to mention, uh, Lynn mentioned about uh, the evaluation of the press program. Yes, we have, any, we have a, um, a manager who under grant funded who's helping us develop both a database and everything is more complicated than you think because, you know, does a database address HIPAA things? Or are we, are we, are we going to try to get the one for the fire department, all those types of things. So they're working through all those details. Um, you know, they're hoping to go live on January 7th. And then in terms of responding to actual calls, they, they have a sort of a, a, a bunch of um, individual in, uh, interactions that have been informative, but yes, we want to be able to evaluate the, the results of that program. Red, your hand is still up. I don't know if that was from before. Lynn? Matt, I assume your comment on sidewalks and also includes roads because I, I hear it I don't hear them ever decoupled. I just keep hearing them, period. Um, and then, I, Andy, I do want to look, I do want to talk a little bit about capital, the other capital, not just the four major projects of capital. But, um, you know, we have sustainability goals that helps dictate some of what we should be looking at in capital purchases. Um, we do have the four major projects. We do have the five-year capital plan. And as we do all of that, I think it's important that that 
we not lose sight of the need to build that into the annual budget uh, so that, you know, the, the 10.5 sounds great, but I'm going to go back to roads and sidewalks. There are people in Amherst who will say that is the fifth capital project. And that's what they would like to see improved and um, so forth. So the issue of capital comes up for me. So finally, in that area, we are sitting on some pretty dilapidated buildings that either we need to figure out how we're going to demolish, repurpose, reuse, or sell. And you're, pro you're going to hear this with me with the town manager's goals as well. Perhaps it's time that the group of people look at what are we going to do with the town's properties that are vacant and not being utilized and, uh, and, and deal with the tug that we're going to hear. And that is you should never give up a piece of town property because you never know when you might need it versus yes, sometimes maintenance is not our highest priority. So that's one piece in that. And then on the other capital front, and that is we are on the verge, we hope, of doing some major new buildings. And we have some existing buildings that we treasure like town hall. And are we building into our budgets enough to maintain those so that we're not looking at serious additional problems with those buildings down the road? Um, you know, for instance, we're going to put a new roof on the police department. I think maybe we have already. Um, are we getting there? And then we say, we're going to put solar on it. That's great. Uh, you know, but how are we going to deal with the ongoing maintenance and upkeep of existing buildings and new buildings? And then also the buildings we're no longer occupying, including ones we anticipate not occupying in the future, such as the uh, one elementary school. GOL had that discussion. Is that what I understand? Which discussion, Andy? About uh, excess buildings um, and uh, we're. No, no, no. We didn't have that discussion. I fully support everything Lynn just said, um, but GOL did not have. Okay. That I just was curious whether it was going to be built into council so goals because. Uh, I don't want to repeat council goals, but I want to incorporate council goals um, that come, so that I bring the two processes together is the way I've been handling it. Uh, there was a, uh, I don't know if you've talked about this in whatever group has discussed it, but uh, the select board, as we were tailing out of business as a select board, had a um, developed a policy on um, excess buildings and uh, a staff uh, committee that was assigned to evaluating buildings and proposing what to do with surplus property and um, a whole procedure for disposal of surplus property. And I don't know if anything has come of that since the select board adopted it. Uh, I don't know if uh, Sean or Paul have thoughts if response yes so that policy and that committee still exists it just hasn't prior hasn't been prior a priority for that group to get together and start to dispose of properties um the only property is in on a uh, strong street that they've been exploring for affordable housing um, they, haven't at, they haven't looked at the other properties that the buildings the buildings the properties with buildings at this point in time but they can i mean i can find that and send it to the finance committee the uh, Dave Zomack uh, gets a lot of credit for doing a lot of work to um, help the select board to um, develop that policy. Lynn, back to you since. Nope, I'm done for the moment. Okay. Um, then I guess uh, Kathy. Bob was before me. I'm just going on the order on my list on the right. No, uh, sorry. Yeah, I just wanted to build on what Lynn said. I, I totally agree that we need to really look at all capital projects. And I, I you know, we started an inventory, um, and I, I would like to see 
the town build up that inventory so that we cover all of the capital issues. Because quite frankly, I don't personally, I don't have a good sense of what our capital commitments are, maintenance commitments are for the next 10 years. Um, you know, I think we need to know that. And the, the inventory is one way, it's not the only way, but it's one way to kind of like put everything out there to say, yeah, we need a new roof on every building every 25 years. That means 25 years from now, we're going to hit with, you know, whatever, $500,000 cost to replace the roof. I think that would be great if we had it. I know people are strapped for time and all that, but I think as we look at each individual property or as we you know do different um efforts to to look at capital i think we should fold that information into the inventory so that we're capturing it and it's we're getting it all together in one place would it be unreasonable, would it be unreasonable to put that into um The, the guidelines along the lines of um, pointing out that the charter provides sure. that the council will give guidance on um, inventory and uh, would that be a place, a, a way to tie it all together? Yeah, I think so. Um, Matt? Oh, I think Kathy and Lynn were before me. I think they spoke out kids. I never know who his hands up is. Yeah, no, I had my hand up. I was just okay. waiting to come after Bob. <laughs> so, okay. and, you know, I, I was following up on what Lynn was saying about um, property. Um, and Andy, you said select board set up something. There is a staff committee. When I think of it, um, and I don't know whether it has a part in guidelines. I wrote this in my manager evaluation too, that I, I think it's a bigger process. So some of these, we might want to just sell them um, for money and turn them into uh, property tax paying entities. And I've watched several towns recently um, create ad hoc kinds of committees um, where it had staff on it, but it was a get input on possible uses and then come back and make a decision about it. And um, the timing of that, so I don't know whether that's in this 12 month period. Well, if the school vote goes one way, we will have one more large property. We already have Hickory Ridge. Now I'm not talking about disposing of it, but it's got a seven acre potentially developable piece. So I'm concerned that we don't immediately jump into something that doesn't produce revenue for us, um, you know, as opposed to, um, I'm, I totally support affordable housing, but if some of these projects were at just the 10% level and they had uh, a few other things. So I have ideas around this, but I don't know whether it could be in guidelines because we have quite a few. We have this South Amherst School. We have the one on Strong Street. I don't, have any idea whether the Hitchcock Center, since it's on conservation land, once it's gone, it's scheduled for demolition, whether that, but I just, a collection of it to give a sense that it's not just going to lay dormant till 10 years from now, we remember that we've got these pieces of property. Um, so it's, it's a liability until we turn it into an asset. Um, so somewhere, whether it's in this document or some other place, I think we need to put it on the radar screen um, because people notice that we've got things just lying fallow um, and why aren't we using them? Uh, that, that's just a piece on what you said, Lynn. I wanna just build on it, but I don't know whether it's this document that we're talking about. Um, that's it. Okay. Um as I said, I will uh, look for and send you the policy. It's, it is a policy of the town uh, because it has never been amended or repealed by the council. Uh, and I'm not sure that as a counselor that we 
that I would recommend we do that. Um, but I think it's important to we all be aware of it. I'll, I can send it out to everybody, Andy. Okay, appreciate it. Matt? Lynn, if you're going to talk about capital, please go ahead before me. Yeah, I am. I am. Um, and I, I just want to recognize that we have some good building blocks because I want to recognize the work that Sean and the staff have already done to really begin a proper inventory. Um, I want to recognize the fact that we have um, hired a person who has been really terrific at assessing our buildings and determining what can be done for them. So this is not as if uh, we, I don't want this to sound in one in any way at all as if it's critical of what has been done and the right. move that we've already taken. So I just want to say that it's we need to keep building on that in a much more aggressive maybe way. Yeah, Thank and you. I just want to point out I didn't intend to be critical either. I was just pointing out that we needed to expand this, keep <laughs> building on what we've built before. Yeah. So, um, Andy, I, I wanted to kind of go in a little diff different direction. Um, so, I, I don't know, Sean, I, I, was, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, families and uh, first time home buyers and sort of connecting some of the economic vitality. I'm, I'm looking at last year's budget book and the, you know, the town council goals. And I'm just reflecting on, you know, the decision last night with the track um, and, you know, the, some of the big school decisions that are currently being made. Um, and then I was looking at some of my notes from last year about the elementary schools. And, you know, I know that school enrollment is not an exact proxy for young families, but it's a pretty good one. And, you know, over 20 years, you know, elementary school enrollment went from 1500 range to 1000 range. So, you know, that's a, that's a 33% drop in, in, you know, elementary age school enrollment in the schools. And I know that's choice and charter and other factors are involved there, but I, you know, I think it's safe to say that you know, the young family population has has dwindled. And, um, you know, when I when I think about what I like living in Amherst, you know, really, I point to the Kendrick Park project, um, first and foremost, as like the most, you know, positive and, and honestly, it net budget neutral, pretty much for the town. It was a really wonderful project that was put on. Um, but but I just I would just like to propose that we uh, and I realize we don't have free funds to allocate towards first time home buyer projects and things like that. But but I would like to, you know, at least sort of articulate uh, a value and a need for the governance of this town to um, to, to try to incentivize and, and just make the town an attractive place for young families to live. And I mean, obviously I'm, I'm biased here in my, you know, my position and everybody knows that, but, you know, as, as I've watched these debates go on and, and then seen some of the decisions that have come out, um, you know, I really do, uh, I, I do question, you know, whether this is a town that truly prioritizes, um, you know, attracting and, and retaining young families um, as residents, you know, and, and as home, as homeowners. Um, and this is I actually my, my, the first time I thought of this was, you know, about a year ago, uh, a, a comment that um, Irv Rhodes made around all the efforts we make towards affordable rental properties, and how few efforts we make towards affordable first time uh, home purchases. And so, you know, I realize that's kind of far afield from what we're talking about right now, but it's just something that's been on my mind as I've seen the tone and tenor of the past few weeks of debate within the, the town and I uh, wanted to kind of put that on the record here. Thanks. Okay, no, that's, uh, thank you. Uh, Sean? Thanks, Eddie. Um, I was just thinking you may want to go through the list and sort of put them in two buckets. Some of the things I've heard feel more like town um, town manager goals than maybe budget guidelines like the the inventory I think is a good one but I don't know necessarily if that's a budget guideline or if that's a, a something to build into the, the town manager's goals so you may want to go through the list when you're done and think about which ones would be in which document but I think they're all they're all good it's just where they belong yes and Michelle and I did talk about that a little bit before I don't know how much we're going to be able to do of it but um, we wanted to at least give some thought to how we make the two documents fit together because uh, we certainly don't want them to be inconsistent but we don't want them to be unnecessarily crossing paths and duplicating so thank you uh lynn 
Yeah, I I really want to just echo that because we did not even get to that conversation last night. And we it's unclear how we're going to actually have that conversation in a timely way. And I think the Finance Committee brings a um, certain and important perspective to the realism of goals and what's realistically able to be done in any one year or two or three year period. Um, we continue to kind of look at the goals as kind of multi-year. I think we also need to look at how we budget in the same kind of way. I mean, there's some of these projects would not be one year projects. Okay, Michelle. Um, Lynn, I had thought to ask you this last night, but it was pretty late. Um, would having a meeting of the whole at the next GOL meeting on November 30th be one possibility for having the discussion since we'll already be having it? And perhaps other counselors may be in the audience, but maybe suggesting that it could be a meeting of the whole and we could have, I think I'm calling it the right thing, a committee of the whole or a meeting of the whole. Um, that's That would give us an opportunity if a majority of counselors could be there to have that discussion um, a bit before we get to the December 5th meeting where we might wanna start to get more concrete I need to unmute. Um, Athena and I can quickly pull people. There are some people who just won't be able to attend that meeting because they work. And uh, that's, but it might be useful to get more counselors into that discussion on, on the 30th. Let me check that out. Okay. Okay, so... Um... This has been helpful to have the list. I Let's step back for a second and talk about the process and get back to the timeline. Uh, Lynn, you're gonna have to be helping with this. Uh, our original goal was to have the draft ready for discussion on December 5th at the next meeting. We've got a lot of work to do and um, if, uh, with the holiday, I won't really get to the draft before the weekend with a whole lot of time. Uh, and so, and then the question is whether we need an additional meeting to discuss the uh, draft rather than try and just do it by people sending me comments, which then doesn't get any cross discussion. Given today's discussion, I'm a little bit concerned that that might not be the best way for this committee to proceed as a committee. Kathy? I, th I think we need another discussion. Andy, that's what I said last time, and I'll stay with that. Um, you know, we made some substantive changes on the first draft last year. Um, and it was a really good first draft, but we moved some things around, we changed some emphasis, and, and there's just no way of doing that with a track change document where we can't see each other and we can't talk with each other um, because ideas bounced off people and they say, oh, yeah, but put it here instead of there. Um, so I don't see a way of just you drafting something and then also, us all sending you comments to get to a draft that we all feel like came out of a, the our collective thinking. I, that's my view. I, I see Bob's nodding his head. I, I just think it's just, because yeah. we can't, because of the prohibition of ch chatting on the phone <laughs> about something, um, that seems to be the only way we can do it, you know, to actually meet. Um, so I think we need another meeting. We can do that. I probably would suggest, uh that either um, with the help of Christina or Sean or just by my going online, them doing a doodle poll might be the best way to schedule an additional meeting rather than trying to do it in a collective with everybody pulling out the calendar. 
Andy, I, I, I would suggest that we uh, make sure that Alicia can attend because she hasn't been here and she's an important voice we need to hear on this. I know, I was thinking about that. I was, because I had been in communication with her about today's meeting a number of times. So uh, something must have come up because I thought that she was going to be in by uh, 3.30, but... Um, so my understanding is that she has actually changed when she has to work and is now working more afternoons or something like that. I, I'm not sure I completely understand, but something's changed in her schedule. Well, we need to try and reach out to her because I agree that she's an important member of the committee. It's unfortunate. Uh, I had asked her about whether she had an order of agenda kind of quest uh, recommendation. So has Michelle left the meeting for the rest of the evening? Yes, uh, which oh. is gonna, she said that she had to leave around four. Yeah, so when we met last time, I put a tentative hold on the 29th, Tuesday, the same as the right. normal time. I just put a, cause we talked about this. And so I just penciled it in. Um, not knowing if that was the best date, Andy, but no one said no to that last time. And as mm -hmm. Lynn said, Alicia's schedule, I don't actually know what her schedule was because she, because she could she could make the Tuesday morning, this morning we met the school building committee, but she can't make Friday morning. So it seems like she's got different day constraints, um, but I had put a tentative hold on my calendar and I'll just keep it until someone tells me. It's a different day. Yeah. Um, Athena? Thanks, Andy. I just want to suggest that um, we put together some tentative dates and do a poll rather than discussing individual people's schedules while they're not here. I feel a little bit uncomfortable yeah. about doing yes. that. Yeah, so, exactly. Um, if if uh, Andy and I, you, you and I work together on that, or if other members have suggestions for dates that might work, then we can we can do that offline. That's one of the things that we're allowed to do offline as administrative tasks. I totally agree, Athena. And if you can get uh, Alicia at least to say what times would work for her, um, so we have at least a slot that we know. Because at this point, I have no idea. Um, I have partial knowledge. We'll make sure to do that. Yeah, that's uh, for compliance with open meeting law. I think it really would be best if we had a full meeting. Uh, over the draft so that uh, public at least had the opportunity to see the draft and comment on the draft uh, in our continued effort to uh, be good models for how to run on open meetings. Um, Andy, just to clarify, so would the next meeting be to develop the draft? Well, what I'm gonna try and do is develop uh, what we did last year, uh, develop a first draft, which um, then, um, as Kathy pointed out, we did certain things, we moved some things around, we decided to create emphasis paragraphs with each section that would sort of summarize what the key points were of the, of the section so that people could read it and, you know, delve in at various levels as they might be interested. I think those were the kinds, kinds of editorial things we did. And there may have been some substantive things we did also. Yeah, that makes sense. I think it's easier for people to react to, to something and then beef it up from there. Yeah. Um, so I maybe, um, let's see what, uh, your thoughts are as a group. It might be good to uh, see if there's any um, desire now for any members of the public who are um, in the audience uh, to see if there's public comment and uh, get that in and then uh, come back to um, minutes and um, anything else that we need to talk about. Uh, so let me just say that 
you're, if you're in the public um, currently as an attendee and you would like to be recognized to um, offer public comment to the group, please raise your hand because uh, we will recognize you and bring you into the meeting. Yeah, I see no requests. So at this point, I think that we're back to where we were. Um, and I think that the other question that we're going to have to uh, uh, get to at some point is whether there's follow up to last night's discussion, including the uh, uh, re suggestions of the superintendent about. Um, issues that uh, we need that the schools would like us to be thinking about uh, but i'm not sure that we can we want to make sure we get the guidelines done as our first goal but that certainly comes in uh, but, um, and it, to some extent it might be a piece of it because uh, addressing the um, recreation um fields in and around the high school and community fields may be an issue that we need to at least put out there in the draft so that we can get council discussion bob yeah i i just had a random thought and that was that if if it may have already been done but um it would be helpful for uh someone from dpw i guess to consult with other uh, institutions like UMass uh, that maintain grass fields as a, you know, athletic fields as a part of what they do, um, you know, and, you know, is there a special grass that they plant? Is there, you know, other ways that they grade it so that it can be uh, more easily um, drained of water? I mean, it might just be helpful to have some expert expertise um, that, um, exists in the community uh you know tap into that that's all no, that's and helpful. Andy, uh, Andy, can i respond to that real quick yeah i was thinking uh, Dave. yeah i mean we do have somebody in the dpw who has sort of a turf management expertise i think mm -hmm. again i think some of it may be resources i think as you heard a lot of it may be you know just staffing and time um yeah. but again i just want to emphasize a key piece of it is just the usage and you know it doesn't matter what you do mm -hmm. you know if there's limits on what type of pesticides you can use and what types of treatments yeah. you can apply um it doesn't matter what you have, but um, the one thing we do have from, is from that 2019 study, it does get into sort of the maintenance costs of fields and how much you should have um, set aside for maintenance of, of natural fields versus turf. Um, but, I, but I can bring that back to DPW and see what they think. Okay, thanks. That yeah, was from the Recreation Area Working Group or whatever yep. the name of it. And that was, uh, I think, staffed by Dave Somak. Bernie? Just an aside, uh, UMass has a international reputation for its turf management program. Um, we may actually want to, uh, if we have uh, some interest in that, we may actually want to see if the university would be interested in uh, using our athletic fields to, uh, uh, as, in, to maintain and to practice. They, you know, they had their research facilities out in Deerfield and, uh, uh, you know, having something closer to home and might be helpful to them. Okay. Um, other thoughts or topics? In this? Okay. Um, Going back to the agenda, um, I think that we uh, don't need to try and prolong this meeting for the sake of prolonging the meeting uh, and, because we're going to schedule an extra meeting and that might be the best way to handle it. Uh, I do want to uh, suggest that um, I've reviewed one more set of minutes, so we're getting closer to the end, but we could. Um, Go ahead and uh, the, the changes to the June 7th draft, which you've previously seen that I suggested were uh, very minor editorial things. They're, you know, 
period uh, breaking some of those uh, long phrases with lots of semicolons into separate sentences and things like that. There were no significant changes. So if somebody wants to make a motion to adopt the minutes of June 7, 2022, I think then we're down to um, three. Lynn? I'm more than willing to make that motion, but what is the status on September 13th, October 4, and October 18th? They need review. Okay. And that's why uh, I had hoped to do it, but there's so much that is happening within the past uh, week that uh, it just didn't get, okay. get done. I, I just needed clarification. So I move that we approve the minutes from June 7th, 2022. Is there a second? Kathy seconds. I, uh, so we have a motion. Um, we ready to vote? Bring yes. no hands. Um, so I'll just go, Kathy. Yes. Um, yes, Lynn. Yes. Bernie. Concur. Uh, Bob. I support. And Matt. So it's uh, voting uh, members. Uh, you need to vote, Andy. I did. Oh, okay. You did. Uh, that makes it uh, three to zero with two absent and um, three in support. Uh, from the resident members. Any other business that people would like to raise today? Because if not, um, uh, the next meeting will be as scheduled by the doodle, um, after we get the doodle poll done and I'll work with Athena as quickly as possible to get that out. Appreciate quick responses and um, Otherwise, we're adjourned. So I'll call the meeting adjourned to 10 minutes after four. And thank you for a very efficient meeting. Okay. Well, have a good holiday. Yeah, everyone have a good holiday. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Thanks.